three, two, one. Welcome to the show, everybody. All right. Welcome to the show. Whoa. Is that loud? <laughs> You're screaming at me, man. <laughs> He's excited, man. It's Friday. I'm ready. It's Friday. Ready Mar- to go. Market's crashing. Yeah, well, not not yet. Not crashing. Not yet. It's kind of going sideways. It's right been now. a heck of a week. We were talking about that most of the morning, how yeah. sideways is one of the most difficult ways, whether it's the overall market, whether it's one stock, an ETF, whatever, like trying to play in the market when it's going sideways, anything's going sideways, it's very difficult because you don't know it's going sideways till it is. Right. You can't see it. If, if <laughs> Once you can get a sideways channel. Then you know it's going sideways. And you know it's going sideways and you can have a good top and bottom range. Yeah. Um, if you're day trading and or don't have uh, TSP rules, then you buy at the bottom of the range, you sell at the top of the range. And you just watch it bounce. Watch yeah. it, it's, we can't it's do It's fantastic, that. right? Yeah, we can't do we that. We can't do that. Um. But uh, we can do some other things. We've got plenty of tools. And uh, so we got a bunch of good stuff this week. All right. So we had a question in the Facebook group. That, this is loud on me, too. <laughs> um, You're just loud today. Man. Yeah, maybe. Uh, really good question in the Facebook group. There was a ton of engagement on this one. Uh, and so the we're going to get into it. But the gist of it was this uh, new new to the government more or less, actually, they'd been in the in for, I think it was eight years, 29 years old, been in the G Fund the whole time. Um, and so, as you can imagine, the comments on in the in Facebook were, you know, get out of the G Fund, like CNS all day and, and all that. Um, but it's amazing how everybody becomes a financial advisor. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, that's what the group is for. You're, you're asking Let's questions and people are, yeah. you know, putting in their two cents. So this is our opportunity to put in our two cents. We're giving two cents. Okay. Might even give you five cents. Maybe. Give um, me a nickel. So he, he, he fortunately puts in what the, I don't know if it's he or she, to be honest, but put in their, th- their goal and uh, what should they do? So we're going to take a look at that. Uh, everybody's probably heard that the meme or the, cliche right sell in may and go away um may is next month and if you were to implement this sell in may and go away strategy you actually do it in uh you're looking for a trigger in april for the sell in may and then you buy it back um in october so you're looking for yeah, triggers in October, I think. I have to go back and look at that for when we get to that point. Yeah, but well, kind of the point is like it's a window. It's not an actual yeah. day. Right, right. right. Is it the, so the best six months uh, on average over time um, for the stocks and then the worst six months. So you, the idea of this seasonal strategy is you want to be in the stock funds during the best six months of the year historically and out of the stock funds during the worst six months. And that's one of the ways you can do a seasonal strategy. Yeah. There, there's quite a few different versions of a seasonal strategy. This one just happens to be kind of a broadly well-known, I would say well-known one, yep. of uh, th- meaning that it's been around since like the beginning of the stock market. Long time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then we're going to, bonus chart is going to be TLT uh, in the mutual fund window, ticker symbols VLGSX. Uh, and it's very similar to how the F fund operates, so you can kind of, Basically, look at the F fund off of that also. And then the, the C fund weekly charts. All right. So, hello, I've had my TSP for eight years, and it's been in the G fund since the start. I'm looking for some guidance knowledge to carry my funds to reach my goal, or to, uh, to change my funds, to reach my goal of 500000 to a million by retirement. I'm currently 29. Okay. Good thing is you got time. <laughs> You definitely get time. Time's on your side. Yep. So there's a couple things about this, right? Let me just make sure. Yeah, okay. So my, my idea of it, my, my five cents or two cents or whatever I get, um, if you're just starting, more or less starting your career, you have a lot of time, uh, you want to make a plan, right? And a pretty good place to start is what's your goal? So his stated goal is not to maximize my thrift savings plan. His stated goal is to retire with 500K to a million dollars. Okay, so if we start there. And then, right, am I a passive or an active investor? Right, if I'm passive, uh, I'm going to do some kind of buy and hold approach or L funds, something, some kind of set it and forget it, right? Um, An active 
management strategy kind of fits your risk tolerance uh, and personal circumstances. So you, you're trying to decide whether or not you're like a buy and hold person or an active person. Um, active management options, right? There's different types of trend trading, different types of seasonality trading. We're going to look at one of them uh, and different types of swing trading. And, and at the end of the day, since he, this person identified a goal, what's the most conservative way that I can meet my goal? When we're saying conservative, we mean risk averse? Um, I, guess I, I guess in financial speak, I would say that you want the least amount of drawdown. So how do I get to my goal over time without these big swings without the big swings okay yeah um so that's what you would do right you'd, ma you'd make a plan you get your goal which is great because if your goal is i, I want to maximize my tsp that's pretty much everybody's goal but <laughs> uh, but it puts you in a mindset of like every time we get a dip i'm freaked out or if the, if the market goes way down now i really got a big problem because i got to catch back up you know, I'm not where I was before, so, you know, I'm now I'm nowhere near my, my quote-unquote goals. So if your goal is just to always be better than you were yesterday, uh, it, it's t you're, you're setting yourself up for failure, basically. Yeah, well, um, it's just a broad goal, and that's not necessarily a good thing. It's a goal. Any goal is better than no goal. Yeah, for right? sure. That's, let's just start there, right? Any goal is better than no goal. Any plan is better than no plan. Uh, but it is nice to get specific in your, in your goal. Now, you have to be reasonable. And I think they've chosen a very reasonable, a, a sure. reasonable window of, of um, you know, of, of growth, right? You, you're, Plenty you're, of time. You're 30 years old. You know, you're, you're not, you know, you're not 50. You, you got some time in there right. to, for compounding to be your friend. Now, yep. I know you're going to get into this, but it's not just, you got two things. What's the market going to do between now and then? And then how aggressively are you going to put in your contributions? Because you ain't going to get there without putting, right. trying to max some maximize your contributions right, right. that's the thing a lot of people leave out and they're like man i want to make five hundred thousand uh, dollars in my account or a million by the time i retire and they're not even putting in five percent matching right yeah. you're like bro we got to start there that or sis like yeah. we got we to start right there <laughs> you're not going to get a million dollars in your account without you, not necessarily you have to maximize it every year it's not everybody has that much money yeah. that they can set aside, but you want to get as close as close as you can. You want you want to max it out if you can, but an absolute minimum, you have to contribute five percent because the government's going to give you five. They're giving you a hundred percent return, mean, right? They're giving you hundred percent return. They're going to give you five percent for the five percent you put in. There's where you start, and of course, if we knew their per personal circumstances and all those kind of factors, you could find ways of carving out money that you're spending on stuff you don't really need to spend yeah. it on. And put that in your retirement. If you're serious about your retirement goal and you say, and I wish I'd been this serious. Yeah. And I'm teaching my kids to be serious about it. Because compounding is your friend. The first 100000 is the hardest 100000 you'll ever put yeah. back. Once you hit that 100000 goal, compounding really starts to be Snowballs. your friend. Yeah. 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 Go the, ahead, Doug. The interesting thing about this, though, and it's, it, most people don't come to it like this. Um, if you say your goal is 500000 to a million in my TSP account because I'm going to use that money for X. And I... Now, it, it's a pretty long-term plan, and the, the value of a million dollars in 25 years isn't going to be any, you're not going to be able to buy what you could buy today for a million dollars. But taking but out, start. Taking out in inflation, um, if you say, I intend to use my TSP uh, money when I retire to buy a, a beach house, and I want to be able to buy a beach house in, in, for a million dollars, right? So, so you have a very specific thing for that money. Most people, again, just they want to maximize TSP so they have a, a maximum number of options at retirement, right? Which makes sense. But if you say, all right, I want to buy the beach house or I'm going to have three kids and I'm, I want to be able to put them through college and to do that, I'm going to need a million dollars. Um, or, you know, say I, I, I want the beach house and how much do I have to contribute so that I can get the million dollars but I don't, uh, but I, so I'm not going to try to max out TSP. I'm going to put in enough so that I can get the million dollars. And with the remainder, I'm going to go do uh, 529 plans or something like that. Like, or I'm going to double down on my mortgage payments because I want my house paid off. Like, there are other things you can do with that money in your life other than contribute it to TSP. But it definitely starts with knowing what your goal is for TSP, which I, that's what I like about this question. 
Um, yeah, having a goal is, is, is in any financial plan, right? In any situation like we're talking about, if you don't even have a goal, it's hard to make a plan. You get, but you, you need to have both, right? Yep. You, you need to have realistic goals and you need to put that into a plan and then execute the plan. Yep. Yep. Um, and, you know, one of the things that is great about being in the government service and or the military is this isn't our only retirement plan. It's a one that we can uh, impact the most, but we still have pensions. You can argue yep. whether they're good pensions or bad pensions, but we at least have them. Yep. And so if you look at a goal like a million dollars for your TSP and include the fact that you're going to have an annuity from for the entire time, you know, you're retired, that's a lot better off than most people. Oh, yeah. I would say 80, 90 <laughs> percent of people. Yeah. And so that 500 to a million dollars is a really good goal. It's attainable if you do the right things. Yep. And, you know, I, I've seen things thrown around where like, What's the what's the amount you need to live comfortably right now if you retire? Right. It's like one point four, one point six million, depending on who, who you ask and what your lifestyle is like and whatever. But if you think about that, okay, they're not they're not usually including an annuity in right. that, right? right? So if if we military members and and, and federal civilians get a million dollars or close to it, you're going to be okay. <laughs> like as long as you manage yeah. your money, right? Right. Yep. You got to have a plan and a budget and all these things, but you'll be fine. So that's a good, reasonable goal. Yeah. We're kind of spending a lot more time on that than maybe we planned, but it's probably one of the most important things is having that goal, make a realistic goal, make yourself a plan. I mean, these are things a financial advisor would do for you, yep. but not everybody, you know, might want a financial advisor c- can afford it or whatever. I'd say you, you can't not afford it. Like you need one, but uh, cause they'll help you put together these plans. The plan is key. Okay. So, we kind of scrolled, scrolled through the whole thing, so I'm, I'm kind of getting to the punchline, actually. So, what's, what's the most conservative way to meet my goal? So, this person, they've got their plan. They have other things to do with, with, with the money. They don't necessarily, you know, I, I want to put the least amount into my TSP to hit my goal for when I retire, right? So, I went to Nerd Wallet because TSP doesn't have great calculators anymore, or at least not the one that I used to really like. Um, but if you, this, is, this assumption is that a person's age 29, they make $100,000 a year. Okay, so you're a government employee, you've been in for eight years, let's say you're making 100 grand. And you currently have 100 grand in your TSP. So if all those potentially are pretty close to this, this person's question, right? So what I did was I said, okay, 10%. If you put in 10%, the government matches you 5%. The limit on the matching is 5 so that's the because mo- that's the most the government will match you. Your retirement age is 65. You need a rate of return of 2.2% to get a million dollars. The G fund is about... Right now, it's close to 4%. Um, so you're twice what you need. It's very unlikely that the G fund r- rate of return is going to get lower than 2.2%. I mean, it's. I think we're in a uh, a higher for longer and, and, a, and an uptrend in rates over time. We've just we've talked about it a bunch of times. We've just come off 40 years of a declining rate cycle. Um, the best I think we can hope for now is we as rates go sideways for a while in between some kind of range, say five on the top side because that's what we've seen so far, but five percent down to what the Fed wants, two percent. So if it's in there somewhere, say three, three and a half percent at at worst, if from the G fund perspective, you're you're gonna be over that two point two percent. Right. And two point two, uh, as and most people watching this right now goes, no way you 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 wouldn't get more than that. Well, we're just saying if you just kept it in the G fund. Yep. Now notice the uh, the green and the blue. The blue is your contributions. Yep. The green is your return. Yep. Now I just want to make sure people are looking at this the right way. Because are you going to show? I'm assuming you're going to show one with a higher return or no? Oh no. This is no, it. No, no. This is the whole point because. Because the the comments in Facebook were, oh, oh go to go you. to the CNS all day. You know, you'll make all this money. Whatever. The point is, the person's goal is five hundred to a million. Okay, what I'm saying here, and I'm not saying it. It's just the math. Right. As <laughs> this long is the Jerry's math. <laughs> this is not. This is just it's math. nerd wallet. Maybe nerd wallet's wrong. I don't know. But we all get fixated on yes. either the gambling mentality of it, or yeah. our goal is I want to get as much money out of it as I can. If that's not your goal, if your goal is 500 to a million, 
um, why, <laughs> why, if that's your, that's my goal, right? Yeah. Now, the million was the high side of his goal, right? Yep. <laughs> you can attain that goal with zero risk, assuming that you stay into 65, you continue to contribute 10% uh, to your TSP, and, you know, you're, you're making at least $100,000. So as your salary goes up, if you make more than hundred grand, you are contributing more. And, I mean, th- this million isn't going to be – it's going to be well over a million. Yeah, and so I want to point out this is actually a good conversation. I'm glad you, you took this question because yeah. I remember seeing this in Facebook. So if you're a naysayer or you're this person and you've got people telling you, oh, I made a million this way and I made a million that way and do whatever, um, on a side, side channel, right, maybe it's DMs, PMs, I don't know what they call it on Facebook right now, but, you know, go off and ask that person, fill in the blanks on this thing. Yep. Okay, when did you start contributing? How much and how many years? Because what you'll dig into is how they actually got there, right? Because what I've seen, what we've seen, I think, more often than not, uh, people aren't necessarily making their million this way, but they do get there. Now, what I've seen is it's year 10 or 12 or 15, they start dumping money in. Mm-hmm. Um, because the reason I'm explaining this is because if if, if you look at this and you're you're somebody that's been in – uh, the government for several years and you think to yourself, well, then why don't I, you know, I'm not on track to have a million. Well, did you, did you, did you, everything in here, did you do that? Right. First of all, you know, have you been given 10%, you know, all the things, because usually one of those things is missing, mm-hmm. right? Meaning maybe you did give uh, higher contributions. I doubt it. That's usually the thing that's missing the most. Yep. Uh, normally what you're doing is you are trying to play this weird game of jumping in and out of CNS and doing these things. And what's happening is, uh, as we know, the market doesn't always go up. Right. And so what's happened is your account balance has dipped. Somebody told you to buy, buy, buy while it's at, you know, all these things, right? To buy the dip and, you know, buy it cheap as a share. These aren't stock shares. This, this isn't the same game we're playing, okay? Right. This retirement account is very different than a brokerage account. But let's just say that all those things factor in. So when I sometimes when I see someone that says, I've been in the government for 30 years and I've got a million dollars in my TSP, I'm not impressed. Yeah. I'm impressed when you've got a million and a half or two million because that means you did some you, you did some, you did some things. things right. Yeah. If you've got 500 to a million and you've been dumping 20% in there a year, something's off. Something's off. Yeah. What were, what, because if you'd have just been in the G fund that entire time, you would have that much. Right. Or more. Right. So anyway, all I'm trying to point out is I'm, I'm, I can I can see the people coming out of the woodwork if they oh yeah yeah when they watch this and they'll be like oh but I did this and then didn't do it okay I got you something in there because Jerry's uh, this is, isn't his math no it's nerd wallet so go into nerd wallet find this calculator do it for yourself play around with it go in there like you know I on a personal side you know my my goal every year is to hit somewhere around ten percent. Sometimes that's easily done. Sometimes it's not. Mm -hmm. And so if that's the case, then that's what I would put in there because I am an active investor. I generally know what I'm doing (laughs) and that's what I can expect. Okay. If that's your case, then put that in there. 6% is probably more reasonable for people that aren't, you know, really actively investing. Uh, If you put 20% in there, you're lying to yourself, but let's just say, uh, because you wouldn't be doing that in the TSP uh, unless the market did it for you. Let me back right, up because right. there's going to be people who say, but I did 26. Well, that's sure. just, the market did the work for you. Right. Uh, that doesn't always happen. Uh, 2022, right? It doesn't always happen. So my point here is put some realistic numbers in there, play with it, see if your goal is realistic. Mm-hmm. Now, what Jerry's has proven is this person's goal is realistic, even if they were to stay in the G fund. The key is contributions. That's what yep. most people miss out. It is not, I would say the number one thing is how much you're contributing. The second thing is, is how disciplined you are in being able to carry out your plan. If you start with those two, notice I didn't say what fund you're in. Right. right. Put your money in there as much as you can. Be disciplined about your plan, whatever your plan is, and execute your plan. Everything else is, is, is secondary to that or, or, or tertiary, yep. right? Yep. It's, it's after that, it's like, okay, I do understand how the market works. I am going to apply some of these. Because um, what Jerry just explained is a very passive buy and hold strategy. It can't get more passive. It can't get any more passive. And it also can't get uh, it's less. zero risk. It's zero risk. Absolutely zero risk. So if with the mass, zero risk and, and no, um, no active anything, you could meet that goal. Now, part of this is because the person's young enough. Yep. 
right? And a lot of people don't start asking these questions until they're 35 or 40. That's the reality, right? A lot of people don't even get engaged in their um, uh, their 401k or their TSP till they're like 40, right? Yeah. And that's the wrong way. If you get if you get engaged when you're 25, uh, not engaged to be married, but engaged in your retirement account, because <laughs> one <laughs> don't even start me down that road. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I derailed. <laughs> I derailed. Let's move on with this. Yeah. So the, there are definitely people that that we'll we'll see in the comments about this. I'm sure. Um, you know, you're leaving all this money in the table and everything else. And, and that's true. Uh, but if we go back to the, this person's original uh, question. You're going right? to have to tag them in this post to I make know. sure they see it. I know. The, the goal was 500 to a million. That's my goal. So, so how do I get there with the least amount of risk? And I would say zero risk is about the least amount of risk. Um, and if you can get there in the G fund, why would you spend any time in any other fund? I can, I can guarantee to meet my goal. I only have to, so that, then when you use the calculator, you start with, you know, in this case, a million and play with these numbers and figure out uh, what's the minimum you can get the, the rate of return down to to get your goal. Um, you might, you know, you might say, okay, um, do I have to contribute 10%, right? To get the 5% government matching, you have to contribute at least 5%. So if you change this to five, it will have right? a significant impact. It'll have a big mm -hmm. impact, right? But again, it might, it, it maybe it's 700 instead of a million, but now he's, the person's taken that 5% and putting it down uh, to pay down his house faster. Right. right, or putting it to a f uh, 529 plan right. for the kids. That's what I was, I was getting ready to anything. throw in. You, right. you have to, you have to make, make sure you're making better decisions with that money that you're not putting in your retirement account, using it for other things. Yeah, yeah, don't uh, go by the Lambo. One of the things <laughs> I'll point out, go back to the goal, um, so his plan, yeah. his goals there. So if you take a look at this, and let's say this, this person or any of us that are watching this say, okay, well, now what you're telling me is that goal is easily attainable yep. if I follow these things that we just explained. If that is the case... Um, may, maybe I, I set my, my I set the bar too low, right? But that's called mission creep. Like right. I don't like. I mean, <laughs> but I'm just going there because okay. I, I can see people going. Okay, well, if it's that easy, you know, I am I am in my 20s. I got plenty of time. Right. I can do all these things. I mean, after all, I'd rather have two million than one million. Right. Right. right? Sure. Well, so what I'm saying is, don't go too far to the other side. So let's say you creep that up to 1.5 or first of all, go out and do research. Find out what you're trying to do with the money. That's where I'm going to start. Yep. Uh, are you trying to buy a beach house or are you trying to live off of it for 30, 40 years, right? Because yep. I'm trying to live off of it for 30, 40 years. I'm not, I can't buy a beach house with my retirement money. I want to live and actually be retired, right. right? And so to meet my my lifestyle, I need X amount of money per month. And so that's where you start if you really want to live off of it. And back your way into a number that says, oh, well, that number is really like 1.7. I'm just making it up. Mm -hmm. That number is really 1.7. Okay, dial the numbers in that in that calculator to get 1.7. You may be having to dial that up to six percent or seven percent or somewhere in there. Don't get crazy because you're not you're not going to make that over the all 30 years. I don't right. care. Don't talk talk to a real financial advisor. They'll right. tell you the same thing, right? So make it reasonable. You're going to have years that you're just going to kill it and years that you're not, and that's how it works, especially over 30 years. But tweak those numbers till you get your 1.7. Right. Now. But what you've done is you've probably put in a little risk. So you're going to have to be a little more active. You're going to have to learn about how to use those active strategies and be a little bit. Now, if you decide early on, I don't want to do any of that. Do the do the thing Jerry explained it first because that's where you need to be. Um, anyway, I think we beat this up enough, but I think it, this really is the epitome of what every person should be explained when they come into the government or the military. Yeah. Like yeah. someone sit them down. Cause I remember our briefings, you know, I got one when I was coming in the, in the army, I got one when I came into the civilian government and none of it was about this kind of stuff. It was, it, it did now I will give, I will give them credit to where, you know, they encourage you to, to put the, the money into match and things like that. But once it got outside of that, you're not, they're not giving you any kind of investment advice. Right. Meaning learning how to, to manage your stuff investment wise and bar that, you know, your, your, your options are just stay in G. Yeah. Now that this whole thing keys on the goal and all I was trying to do here was number one, say if that's, if that's your goal, yeah. don't let people yeah. push you off your goal. 
right? Because right? you could lose a lot more money over the, over time, certain time frames. And, yeah. And if you if you've been watching this show or not, if you're not, just go back to some of the previous episodes where we talk about. We are always talking about how there are decades. Yeah. Decades where people lost money and it took them that long to get back to where if you lose 50%, you got to have 100% to get back to get back there. If somewhere in that time frame you actually retire, yeah, it's that, that 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 math that Jerry did isn't going to work yep. because you were in the the CNS when they were going down or the C when it was going whatever. Whatever version of that is, you were you were half ass actively managing it. Right? Yeah. Because that isn't, you know, real buy and hold uh, is different. Yeah. It's, it's uh, still a plan involved. All right, let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think, think we've we got, that we got, we got the got idea the point across. across. I mean, so the, the bottom, bottom line is you can, you can meet your stated goal in the G fund, given all these uh, inputs stay the same. Right. We're not recommending you stay in the G fund. We're just showing you that that is very possible. It's the, yeah. uh, the only option. People poo-poo the, the, the I was going to say the Z fund. <laughs> we need one of those. Everybody yeah. just, you know, craps on the G fund. Yeah. And we're like, no, it's just a tool. Yeah, it's just a tool. And in this case, the, the person's goal was low enough that you that, tool that tool worked with no risk. It's a no-brainer. Yeah. If that's your goal and you're happy with that goal because you want to use the other money for other things, this is what I would be doing. If I said I wanted a million dollars, I would be tweaking this 10% number saying, okay, uh, how low can I get it? If I expect the, okay, I understand we're in an increasing interest rate environment. Maybe I'm going to make the G fund 4%. If, if the G fund rate is 4%, what, what's the minimum number I, uh, percentage I can contribute? And it can't be less than five because that, then that affects this one. But you get my point. If I, can, I, can I get this down to 5%? So I'm contributing half as much as what I was doing before and still get my million dollar guaranteed in, at the end, right? That, that's how I would be playing this. Yeah, and all you'd have to do each year is go, is go and see what the G fund is doing. Right. Because if the G fund gets down to 2%, you're going to have to change those numbers again. Right. But not drastically. No, you're not going to have the big swings like no. you do in the C and the S. If, you, if you were playing this little game that we're doing on this calculator every year, you would win. You would just Now you'd have to accept that some years I'm going to have to put more in because I'm not getting the interest rate I want from the G fund yeah. and some years I'm not, but that's, that it's that, a completely different game from what oh, everybody else is playing in, in CSP also. 100%. So just, yeah, if that's your goal and you're 29 and you want a million bucks, that's how you do it. Risk-free. All right. So sell in May and go away. Probably everybody's heard of that, that little meme before. Um, Stock traders almanac made it into an actual strategy. So, they call it, so Stock Traders Almanac, you can go to their site. Um, you can read this whole thing on, on their website. It's not, it's not part of a subscription, but they have this thing they call the Tactical Seasonal Switching Strategy. Um, and the idea is there are a best six months and a worst six months. So, and they've, they figured it out through the creation of this thing they call the Stock Traders Almanac. Um, and, it, and it goes to this idea of, of sell in May and go away. Um, so, after decades of historical research, uh, they discovered that most market gains occur during the months of November through April. Okay, so those are the best six months of the year to be in. In this case, we're talking about the S&P 500, so our C fund. Um, there, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is what they, they use, but it, the, the, the dates work the same for the C fund. So investing in the Dow Jones Industrial Average between November 1st and April 30th each year and then switching into fixed income for the other six months, which for us means go to the, to the G fund, has produced uh, reliable returns with reduced risk since 1950. Um, good. So, all right. So that's, that's the idea of it, right? Um, our best months switching strategy will not make you an instant millionaire, as other strategies claim to do. Uh, what it will do is b is steadily build wealth over time with half the risk or less of a buy and hold approach. That's that's their what off their website, right? That's not me saying that. Um, this strategy is used in conjunction with the MACD indicator to confirm or assist in timing buy and sell decisions. So once we enter April or October, we begin tracking MACD for confirming buy or sell trigger. Uh, and issue an Almanac investor alert when it occurs. So if you go to Stock Traders Almanac and you get on their email list, they will tell you their buy and sell triggers 
in the month before. So it's sell in May and go away. Actually, you're looking for a sell trigger in April and a buy trigger in October, right? Because you want to be in the stock funds be, it's starting at, the, at least the beginning of November. Uh, and you want to be out, you know, you're looking to get out in April. So this is their chart. Um, if you use this, uh, if you were just in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, we'll call it the, uh, call it the C fund. For the worst six months, you would have, since uh, 1950, right, through 2023, you would have actually been negative. So if you only had, if you're only invested in the worst six months of the year, uh, every year since 1950, you'd be underwater. If you're in the best six months, uh, this is where you are. If you were buy and hold, this is where you are. So there, there, the chart is pretty, um, uh, I would say basically showing that the, the, the best six months um, certainly out, you know, outperforms buy and hold on average. So we took that and kind of showed what it would look like over the, ne over the last, you know, several years. Um, we talk all the time about uh, our uh, grow model portfolio and our, our buy and sell triggers. So I applied our buy and sell triggers to this um, tactical seasonal switching strategy, okay? So if we start back here uh, in the fall of 2020, so this is a weekly chart. So the week of September, um, the week of September 28th, which kicked it into October, um, because you, you don't start looking for a buy trigger until the month before, um, which is November. So this, this buy trigger here actually happened in the first week of October, right? Even though the date, it's the 28th was the, the uh, of September was the Monday uh, in which, the week in which that buy trigger occurred. So you go into the stock funds the week of the 28th of September. And now when April comes around the next year, 2021, you're looking for a sell trigger, okay? We didn't get a sell trigger in April because the market was going up. We didn't get a sell trigger until the week of May 10th. And you don't, there's no point in selling when the market's going up. So you're looking for the first sell trigger um, starting in April uh, and then going forward. So the week of May 10th was the week we got the sell trigger and that's where you would have gotten out. So we got in here, got out here, got a really nice gain over that time period, right? And now it's summertime, you're on vacation, you're good. You're out of the market, you're in the G fund. So this gain, you did not get because you're in the G fund. The market went up, you didn't get the gain. You're in the G fund. October 2021, you're getting back in to the stock funds, right? So it triggered on that week. So that's when you would have gotten in. The market went up, went down, back up, came down a little bit. So you actually had a very small loss you got in here you would have gotten out there for basically flat but a small loss however that was april of 2022 so you avoided that whole big downside um of most of the correction of 2022 and you got back in on the buy trigger first buy trigger in october of 2022 which was basically the bottom of that bear market okay so you get these gains until April of 2023 where you're getting out on the first sell trigger. So now you're out of the market there, right? So you did not get, this, this was basically flat, right? And you're getting back in in October of 23, which again was very close to the bottom. And we just got a sell trigger two weeks ago. So over the last, you know, four or five years or whatever this is, if you use this seasonal switching strategy, you made huge gains here. You're out of the market for this churn. You were flat this year. You were out of the market for most of the 22 decline. You made big gains off the 22 bottom. 
you were out for basically this flat right here, and you made big gains since the October 23 bottom. So in the past five years, if you had used this strategy, you, you did really, really well. It doesn't always work out that way, um, but there's definitely something to this thing. So, and if you were wanting to implement it, like starting now, let's say, uh, two weeks ago, we got the sell trigger, which would take you through um, October. So next, so October of this year, right before the election, we're looking for the next buy trigger to get back into the seasonal switching strategy. Okay. Yeah, and there's like quite that. a few folks that use this sort of strategy. Now, there's now if uh, if you're a seasonal strategy follower, and uh, there's a huge Facebook group and a website where they do seasonal strategies. Yeah. They're using a different version of, of seasonal, like the definition of it. This is more the the um, investor's almanac version. But seasonality just means, you know, you go by certain seasonal trends, yep. right? And so don't don't confuse this to mean that this is the only way to do seasonality. It's just a very, um, it's a common one and it's been around a long time. Yep. And so it has a lot of data. And it's proven that, again, more often than not, it beats buy and hold, which is really that's where you would put seasonality normally as um, in, a, in a risk reward scenario, sort of active, passive. You're trying to figure out where it falls. It, it should be just above buy and hold, buy and hold. Yeah. right? Because buy and hold would be pretty passive if not completely passive. Because not all buy and hold means I'm buy and hold forever. Just, you know, some, sometimes they would do it, you know, occasionally switch that around, but very rarely, mm -hmm. right? The next level up and active would be seasonality, yep. right? Uh, trend trading would be kind of the next level. And so, and Jerry listed that on the, you know, the listed those on the, um, the earlier thing we were talking about with the, with the goals for yep. the person in the Facebook group. But anyway, my point here is with seasonality, there's not only one way to do it, but the reason why we like this one is because it's been used for so long and has proven that more often than not, it beats buy and hold. So if you want to be a, a, a semi-passive person, right, not, not completely passive, but you'd like to take a look at it a couple, two, three times a year. Um, or let's say, let's say this. I think you should always keep your eye on the market. For I sure. think you should always be looking at what's going on. Now, you shouldn't let that make you feel like you're missing out. But you do want to stay at current events. Let's just call it that. Right. You wouldn't want to be completely oblivious to what's going on in the world. Right. right? But so let's say you stay up on current events from a, from a financial uh, perspective, economics perspective. But once or twice, twice, at least twice a year, you know you have a window of time where you're going to make a decision to move in or out. That's how this works, that's right? Works, yeah. And so that's a lot less time investment, a lot less, you know, uh, emotional investment, if you will, than a, a much more active strategy, which is what we do. Yeah. And so, you know, we're, it, it's, 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 it's always interesting. People kind of paint us in a corner. And say, well, you, you, you guys do it this way. We're, we're not black or white, you know. We're not we're not off or on, right? It's not it's 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 not binary. Right. It's just that what we do works for us, speaks to us, you know. And yeah, right. it doesn't necessarily mean it's always the best. And there are other ways to play this game. And so that is one of the most important things you guys can do that are listening to this is find which one speaks to you. Yeah, hundred percent. Find which one speaks to you. First of all, you have to determine if you're a passive or, or an active per investor. You have to figure that out before you get into any of this stuff. Because if you're passive in, by nature or by just circumstances. Yeah, or you don't have time or you don't have the interest. When I was deploying else. around the world in the military, I didn't have time to be, I didn't have the ability, it wasn't the time, I didn't have the ability to actively manage my investments, right? right. right? I should have hired someone to do yeah, that, yeah. but I didn't. But that was by circumstances or by choice, are you passive or active? You got to start there. Yep. Yep. So that's anyway, that's one way to, to play it. Hopefully um, gives you guys something to think about. Okay. Bonus chart, TLT, VLGSX. So TLT is, the, is a, an ETF for the long-term treasury bond. And VLGSX is in the mutual fund window. It's a Vanguard product. That's the same thing. It's a long-term treasury bond. So <laughs> we've looked at the chart before, um, but the setup is really, really good. So I I'm keeping a really close eye on TLT right now. So this is a daily chart of TLT. Um, and this is, this is COVID right here. So once the COVID 
you know, bond volatility kind of settled down, we got to a top. And that was the top in bonds uh, for a long, long time. And it corresponds with the bottom in yield, right, which we had in 2020. So since then, yield has gone up, the price of bonds has gone down, but TLT has gone down in a really good five wave, right, Elliott waves, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So if that count is correct, and this is a major bottom, then we, sh we should expect at least some kind of correction here, right? It, the correction can come all the way back up. It can't get uh, above this high, but it can come all the way back up to here. But at a minimum, we would get some kind of a, B, C, where the length of A equals the length of C, and that would get us, you know, up here to like 112, let's say, which is in the area of the prior four wave, which is how the rules work. So theoretically, we get up here to around 112. So it's not a huge move, but right now we're down here at 90. So if we do get a tick up on TLT, it breaks up breaks out to the upside, you're looking at, at a minimum, you know, say 110. Um, that's a pretty big percentage move, right? And like I said, you can play that in uh, ticker symbol VLGSX in the mutual fund window. So this would happen if stocks start falling and the Fed starts lowering rates in a hurry that's when we get this. And if they really start lowering rates, th then we get it, you know, it moves much higher. Um, so th this is what you really want to kind of focus on in terms of TSP. And the F fund is, is very similar. So if stocks do crater because the Fed broke something in the economy, it's very likely that the F fund and VLGSX, the mutual fund window, moves up in a hurry. Um, and the reason I'm really looking at T TLT right now is because let me just see. I didn't do it. Okay. It's a little bit hard to see, but I put a Fibonacci uh, extension tool on this move from the bottom to this first peak. Okay. And price has come down to the 0.618 retracement level. So this first red line is 38%. The middle one is 50%. And the next one is 62%. So we've come down to that 62% retracement level, which is the most frequent uh, support level before wave C starts going. So, and it's consistent with what everybody thinks the Fed's going to start lowering rates. So the more things you can kind of overlay, um, you know, this is a good time to be really watching, which is why I'm putting it out. And I'm just telling you I'm really watching it because if it breaks to the upside, I'm going to buy it. <laughs> All right. C fund. So it's been a crazy week. Um, so we put up this chart last week. We got each uh, tick, whether it's red or green, is one week of price movement. And here's the top in 2022. So we have this big bear market in 2022. We got the rally in 2023 and 10% correction last summer. Get back up to the prior high churn there for a little bit and then we get the breakout right there and it's kept on going ever since so this this high and this churning right here to, to before it broke through that high should now act as support so if price comes back down we should expect to get support here and price keep going higher right that's that's the idea of, of support and resistance levels so that's what we put up last week and in a shorter time frame we drew that trend line because starting back here, every week, every time price got towards that line, it, f it found support there until last week. It broke that support level. So it doesn't mean the market's crashing. It just means uh, something's definitely changing. So if we fast forward to this week, this is as of, uh, let me see. 11, almost 11.30 on Friday morning. So who knows how this finishes for the day. Um, but this is the weekly candle as of 11.30 on Friday morning, right? We're at the bottom 
pretty, almost at the bottom of the week's uh, trading range. Uh, two consecutive down weeks. Um, we did, again, the Fibonacci retracement level. This is the top in 2022. Okay, It lines up pretty much exactly with this 38% retracement level. So if the C fund comes down to that 38% retracement level, that's one level of support, which if we overlay that with the prior high, it's, it's saying that that should be a really strong support level, right? So, do you, do you see anything? Hmm. Yeah, your screen went blank. <laughs> okay, stand by. I'm back. There you go. I don't know what happened. So, it, you know, it, it kind of, what's, what's in my mind about this is it kind of acts as a magnet, to be honest. So, it doesn't mean we're going to get pulled down that low, but we absolutely could <laughs> because everybody's looking at this as this is the, the first main support level because um, we don't have anything in here. It's, we've gone straight up, you know, we've gone straight up since last October, uh, which is great. But the downside of that is you, you don't have any areas of, of support. And so uh, all we have to work with right now is that first Fibonacci retracement level, which is 38%, and it just so happens to line up with the prior high, which is a great place to come down to. So we'll see, we'll see if that happens. If we zoom in a little bit, um, this is the trend line, right? We get the same Fibonacci retracement levels. Here's the trend line. Last week we broke through it, and this week it continues to the downside. So there's no guarantees that it comes down to that 38% retracement level. Um, it's a risk-reward game, right? Where, where the risk now is much higher that the market continues down than it was, say, on that week. Because on this week, right, three weeks ago, we were, we were in Goldilocks land, right? It, the trend was up, and, and it was going to keep going up until it didn't, right? So last week was the big red flag. This week looks to be kind of confirming that. So how, how much wiggle room do you want to give it? Do you want to have another down week before you consider uh, taking some money off the table? You know, it's your personal circumstances and risk tolerance. So I want to do, wanted to do one more just kind of about that, right? This is the C fund weekly, same chart. And we're going back. This is the top uh, before COVID. And so this is, this is part of a, a technical uh, tool stack that we use. So this is a relative strength indicator, CCI and MACD. We talk about those terms all the time. And all I really wanted to point out on this is this. Once you get above, this line is 50 on relative strength, that dotted line. Once you get above there, as long as the relative strength stays above that 50 line, stocks are moving higher. They oscillate, right? But as long as we stay above that 50 RSI line, stocks are moving higher. When we get below that 50 RSI line, right, that's when stocks are moving down. So if w right now, as of this week, We've been overbought for a long time, and you can stay overbought and price can, can keep going up, right? Because we got overbought back here, and, and price kept moving higher. Now the moving average, which is this orange line, the moving average of the RSI is also overbought, and we just crossed down through it. CCI is crossing down through that 100, and MACD is about to go negative. So what I'm, what I'm saying is the, we're at a top, could we, could this be the beginning of a, of a fall, right? Yeah, it could. It doesn't mean it is. But the, the risk-reward ratio at this point is not the same as it is like back here. I mean, you want to be in the stock funds when, when the trend of RSI is up, right? That's, that's the best time to be in the stock funds. When, when you're overbought, Price can keep going higher. You just you just are on alert that at some point it's going to roll over, and, and that's when the game's over. So your risk-reward right now is not the same as it was back here. 
right back here, we were we were increasing in RSI. Right? Even here we're increasing in RSI. So from here to here, we know that's fine. Now we're RSI is decreasing. Uh, so the risk is much higher. That's all. All right. Hopefully uh, a lot of stuff in there. I feel like it was a little bit disjointed, but uh, <coughs> a lot of stuff was pretty good. Hopefully we get some good comments from uh, people on Facebook about all that, and uh, we'll see what happens at the end of the week. Cause yeah, if you like this kind of stuff on, um, you know, on, our, on our show, on uh, our members on our website get uh, a lot more in-depth analysis. This yeah. is really kind of top level. We're just scratching the surface. But we give you a lot of, I would call it like tactical knowledge <laughs> every yeah. week, right? Uh, every Sunday, our, our, our members get um, a complete breakdown of what happened in the market last week and a look forward to the what we're looking for for the next week, which yep. is very helpful when you're trying to manage your TSP. Um, we haven't found anybody else that really does that, no. and so we're, we're kind of happy with this. What we wish we had when we first came in the game. Exactly. All right, guys. I uh, hope you have enjoyed all of this. If you liked it, share it with your friends. If you didn't, share it with them share anyway. <laughs> share, saw somebody the other day that said, uh, share it with your friends, share it with the enemies. Yeah, share it with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, have a good uh, rest of the week.